Hello again guys and welcome to another video yeah, and this is what I'm currently drawing it's a piece of Star Wars fan art of um, Carl Kestis from the Fallen Order game I did like a little poster thing I've got here in the middle I've got BD1 some uh, graphics up here as a planet and then you've got one of the Knife Sisters in this corner I'm currently drawing in the lightsaber because I've done all the hard parts so now it should just be a pretty simple routine to do the rest well I'll say simple you know what I mean it's gonna take me forever either way I think I've been doing it for about three months now already I'm not a fast artist <laughs> and I can't think of a video I can do out of it um, it would be interesting so I thought I'd just do a bit of live drawing with you for a couple of minutes and I'm going to draw on this side of the lightsaber um, and you can see how I've kind of like done the ambient light that's coming off the lightsaber because I didn't want to draw or do a video on how to draw a lightsaber seems a bit cheesy to do that but if, if you want one of them I can do one you just have to tell me in the comments I can do one but I'm just going to draw on this side and uh, yeah maybe it'll help you okay so this was supposed to be a completely live tutorial but after about half an hour of drawing I realized I was getting nowhere I drew a section that was about as big as my fingernail and it was pointless, you weren't going to learn nothing from it. So I decided to crack on and draw the whole side of the poncho. And it took me five hours. So this would be a five hour tutorial. And I thought, no one's going to stick around and watch all that. So I'm going to cut this video into live sections. And then I'm going to do a voiceover for the parts that matter. So that you can learn from me. But... If you're the kind of person that wants five hour live tutorials, you know, just leave me a comment and maybe I'll do one because my computer will hate me for it. Okay, so to start off with, you're going to stick to your lightest colours that you've chosen to draw your lightsaber in, whatever colour it is. Obviously this is a blue one, so the pencil you can see me using right now is turquoise. And it's mixed in with a dark turquoise, midnight blue and an indigo but we'll get into them later. The reason why I'm using this turquoise colour is because it's in the face, it's in the top of the poncho and it's in his hair where it's reflecting the lightsaber. That's where the light source is for this blue on his face so it's best to keep to the same colour palette otherwise it's not really going to make any sense when you start drawing out the lightsaber or any light source that you're drawing that's emitting the reflection on the face especially if it's in colour because if you change the colour palette anyone that looks at it will be thinking why is the lightsaber a different colour from what's reflecting on the face and on the clothing so I will always start from light to dark and right now I'm using the turquoise like I said and I'm leaving a tiny bit in the middle where I'm not touching it, so I'm leaving the paper white because I'm giving myself some kind of playroom in case I want to add like a light aqua colour in there because I don't think it's going to be completely white because I don't want it to be as white as the lightsaber just kind of close because it will emit some kind of harsh lighting as well if you get what I mean and you can see this at the top of the lightsaber where it kind of looks like a smoke effect or cloud effect and that's what I was going for kind of like it's burning the dust around the lightsaber if that makes sense my technique is to stay light because I've learnt my lesson from previous artworks where I've gone in heavy handed maxed out a two for the paper and I can't fix I can't colour over the top because I end up with wax blooms and it just won't take any more crayon so the best thing to do is to stay light with all your pencils eventually they'll blend with each other it takes many many layers 
of going back and forth. Right now you can see me using that white aqua pencil, which I called Arctic White in previous videos, but just didn't know that it's light aqua. I don't get why they're calling these names. And I'm shading over the parts that are left white because I said it wasn't going to be completely white. So I'm just, you know, testing the waters with this light aqua pencil. It leaves me a lot of room to change it over time because the pencil is so light anyway. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to push that turquoise into the light aqua. And then the light aqua is going to push back into the turquoise. And I'm going to go back and forth like that until I get a nice transition. This will also happen when I add the dark indigo. I'll go turquoise dark indigo, turquoise dark indigo, and then so forth and so forth. It can vary from the brand of pencil that you're using. Some pencils will blend more evenly and quickly. And also the paper. You know that I'm using Derwent Lightfast for this, and I'm also using Derwent Lightfast paper, naturally. A brilliant tool that you can buy is the Stedler Mars Razor. And I'm pretty sure I've just butchered the name, but they are very very good at removing coloured pencil not all the way back to the white of the paper I've mentioned it in previous videos that it will leave a stain on the paper and this also allows you to blend between two colours so you can come up with a nice transition that's what I'm doing now I'm kind of rubbing away a bit of that light aqua and it will blend into the turquoise I also use this as going way too dark with my darker colours over me lighter colours and then I'll lightly go over with this ballpoint pen eraser and it'll remove the darker colour but kind of leave a nice transition it takes a bit of practice to get used to the technique of using it that way but they're really really good to use and I've used it throughout this whole portrait a lot on the face as well and they're fairly cheap to buy Into the mid-range to dark blues that I've got, that I'm using on this portrait. This is dark turquoise, and as you can possibly imagine, it blends really well with turquoise. And I'm not drawing very light with this pencil. It can be really overpowering. Yeah, a lot of pigment comes off it, so it can destroy your work if you don't use it properly, which I have found out in the past. Which, you know, where the Stedler Mars razor blah 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 rubber comes from to, for knocking it back but all, that, all that's going to happen here is that I'm going to go back over with the turquoise then back in with the dark turquoise and I'm going to go back and forth until they blend out really nice and smooth and it should create a nice transition and as you can see after hundreds of layers I finally get a nice smooth transition no I'm joking um, took about five it took about five layers going back and forth over the top of each other you can see at the bottom middle of the video where the transition has been quite nice and now I've moved up to the the topper edge kind of blending that out and that's all I've done jumping on back and forth back and forth and eventually the you just mix together and you get a nice mid-tone if that makes sense also, I don't know if you noticed where I left the white of the paper, which was called in with that light aqua, now looks way too white where it didn't previously. And that's because I've laid in that dark turquoise. And when you lay in darker colours around lighter areas, it makes them more vibrant, even though you haven't really done anything. And this will happen a lot when I'm drawing where I think I've got it right and then I'll lay in darker colours in different areas and then I think that looks horrible and needs fixed it. I do fix it later on in the 5 hour tutorial I think, I just coat the whole thing in turquoise and it turns out alright. But my point was is that never do a section of a piece of work and then think it's completely done because you can fit in a section at the other side of the piece of paper and that won't look how it's supposed to look anymore. Okay so this is two hours into the tutorial which is mad because it doesn't really look like I've done much but 
that's what you're aiming for the transition go from left to right you've got an indigo dark turquoise turquoise light aqua bit of rubbing out and then you're just jumping back and forth on top of each other i know i keep repeating myself but that's how you do it that's how you blend them it's tedious you need a lot of patience but the ends justify the means um, from the left to right, and I haven't really mentioned the indigo yet, but it's the same method of you're going dark turquoise indigo going back and forth. And then in the middle, you've got dark turquoise and turquoise going back and forth, and that's how you get that transition. You just go back and forth. Shading in the back of the poncho was the easiest part of the entire drawing so far, because all it is is a mismatch of three different colours. I've got indigo, Midnight blue and black. I've just mixed them together in a big mush. And it's just constant layering, going back and forth until I get the nice colour that I want. I didn't want completely black, but I wanted close because on the left hand side it's going to be space, so that's going to be all black over Starfield. So I didn't want. I want the poncho to blend into that black background, but not too much. I want it to be seen, so I didn't want completely black. I wanted a really dark blue but close to black if that makes sense i know it doesn't make sense but if it makes sense then you understand where i'm coming from <laughs> but that's all i did it's dead simple there's a tiny bit at the bottom of the poncho which is reflecting it's meant to be like a crease in the poncho it's reflecting a lot a bit more and that was the same as doing the edge of the lightsaber i used dark indigo and then dark turquoise and just mixed them together Last but not least of the things that I did when I was ruling the side of this lightsaber is use a colourless blender. It's a, it's made by Derwin but you can get multiple other brands and I have mentioned it in previous videos that I've done, it's just basically the binder that's in colour pencil. And when you scribble it on top of your colours it will blend them out. It's really really good, really really cheap, I would invest in one. I would normally use this when I'm coming towards the end of what I want to do, just to add a few fine details, blend a few things out, amongst other things. I'll go back in with the turquoise, the light aqua, and kind of just, you know, smooth out some of the edges, some of the rough edges, because you will get parts of it where you can see like little tiny bits of the paper through the coloured pencil, like little, I don't know. A little snow sprinklings or something like that where they come through the paper and they you know they can ruin your artwork you can't see them from far away but close up you can see them i always try to get rid of them that's what the colorless blender is really good for including it helps blend a nice transition sometimes but i usually just use it at the end of laying down all the colors because once all the colors are laid down it's got more to blend with Okay then guys, this is what the artwork looks like right now. Still a long way to go, lots of work to do, it's probably going to take me months and months and months. Hopefully not. I probably will do one more live tutorial on this of the ninth sister at the top because she's basically just wearing a shiny black helmet and I think I can do that in one live setting. Please like, subscribe and comment and thank you very much for watching.